In the last episode we looked at some devices that could run Python, but we looked at the ones that came with it pre-installed. We looked at the Gemma which comes with it pre-installed and we looked at the Circuit Playground where it's easy to install it. But what if you have a device that doesn't come with it? Well, it's not that difficult to put it onto the Feather ESP8266 and the ESP32. The ESP8266 is a little bit more mature, a little bit easier, but you can do it on both. And I'm going to run through installing it and then running your first program. So let's take a look. So first you would need to install the ESP tool. And in this case, I already had it, so I'm going to wipe it off and show you installing it from scratch. So I uninstall the ESP tool and then it'll be just like I installed it after with you. So it's installed, everything's satisfactory, then I can use the ESP tool. And the ESP tool is how you talk to your ESP8266 to flash the firmware. So the next thing you're going to want to do is get a binary file. And there's one already for the Feather Hazar which is what I'm using. So we can go ahead and use that and that's the Adafruit circuit Python binary. So we don't have to compile it. We can just transfer the binary using the ESP tool. So again, it runs on the command line. I'm using Mac OS X. And we've got the binary file here. So next we need to use the ESP tool to install it. You need to find your UART, your TTY, your COM port if you're using Windows. So the way I do that is with ls slash dev slash TTY dot star and it'll find all the TTYs and it stands out the one that you want to use. And then you run the ESP tool using that port and first you have to tell it to erase the flash and then you can use the binary to install it. So while that's working away, let's have a look at how you would then go and test that it's installed correctly. And we do that through the terminal. And if you're on Windows, you'll need to use PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y. On Mac and Linux, we've got an application called Screen, which does the same thing. And it connects to that UART that we needed earlier, that TTY or COM port. So we do Screen, and then the port, and then whatever baud rate you're using, so 115, 200. And that brings up a command line, and it's an interpreter. It allows you to connect and run commands. And as you can see, we've got Python running on there. So that's good. Now the ESP32 is a little bit tricky and uh, it's a similar sort of process but it's not exactly easy to find the binary for that. So I'll put it all in the in the write-up but once you've got the ESP32 binary it's pretty similar. So I can print and that shows that it's working. So the next thing I want to do is I need to connect again and I want to show you what you can actually do when you log into the thing. So we use screen again, the COM port and the board rate, get into this interpreter, this REPL, R-E-P-L. And one of the things that's great about the ESP is, is they can connect to Wi-Fi, they can connect to the internet. That's the whole point of these. And by default, you can connect to it as a, its own Wi-Fi connection. But the really cool thing is this REPL, this interpreter, can also work through the web. You can use web sockets and a web browser. So let's have a look at that. There's a git repo that contains this web REPL 
client and uh, you just download it its HTML files and a Python file put them on your machine and then you can load it in your browser so in my case I'm connecting using my local networks which as a 10 dot IP address you connect with whatever it comes up as it would probably 194 and when you've connected to your terminal you need to go into Python and you need to import webrepl underscore setup to enable it by default it won't be enabled you need to tell it you want it to be enabled and then it'll reboot and it'll ask for a password and then you confirm the password and then it'll restart after that it'll be running and you'll be able to connect to it so as you can see it started on mine and like I said I've got a 10 dot IP address because I've gone in and configured it on yours it might be 192.168.4.1 and you see it's using a port number of 8266 because it's the ESP8266 Once you've got that web REPL, you can open the HTML file in your browser. So I'm going to open it in Chrome and you can see it loads by default with 192.168.4.1. As I said earlier, I'm on 10 dot because that's how my network is set up. So I need to change this. So I'll put in the IP address from the board, which is down here, 10. 0.1.35 and I can paste that in using the same port number 8266 and then it asks for the password which I set earlier and now I can send files I can run commands and here's one I prepared earlier my blink script can edit my boot.py so when it starts it's going to load bootpy I want to turn off debugging so I just remark out these comment out these lines send the file to my ESP then when I restart it'll load boot.py it will debug and that means I'm going to be able to echo to the screen using the print command so I'm going to be able to actually see what I'm doing and so it's just like if you're running it from command line you can do print so I run the command run the script so now when I run my Python it's going to run the blink and we can actually see it happen So very simple little script just showing how to get the board set up, get Python on there, get them running, how you can actually run the interpreter and then how we can get Python files onto there and run those and see if they're actually working. So I hope you liked it. Look out for the next episode. Please give me a like, a comment, subscribe and I'll see you next time.